Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs, and welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory, where we film at the Cablevision Studios in Hopog, New York. My guest today is Frank Vetro, author of the book Standing on Principle. And, uh, you know, I read this book a little while ago, and when I first read it, I said, you know what, this story is so crazy, it can't be true, but knowing what I know, it probably is true. But I said, if we did the story even a year ago, everybody would have said, this is insane. There's no way our district attorney is corrupt. There's no way there's corruption in our police department. There's no way a school district would be corrupt. There's no way every judge would be corrupt. Everybody would have said, Gary, what are you doing? This is a crazy ass show. This guy is a nutcase. Don't do it. But now, look what happens. Now we look in, in, in the paper, and now because we have an aggressive district attorney, the FBI has gotten involved. What's happening? A district attorney's under investigation. Uh, the chief of corruption here on Long Island is under investigation. Our chief of police is in jail. Judges have been removed, although we still have Judge Henricks, the chief judge in uh, Suffolk County, who is corrupt. His day is going to come. Don't worry, Frank. We have had judges who have stepped down, and we found out that there's games with the politicians, and there's attorneys. They have uh, recordings of attorneys making deals so all this comes true guess what it's all in this book that's right it's all in this book before any of this came public so now everybody could say hey maybe this guy's not so crazy this really did happen and we're going to get into your story but before we do i just want to say listen you're a smart guy you're very well educated you know that if if what you're saying is not true you're going to be sued. And when I told you before the show, is anything that you, you you don't want to say that's off limits? You said, Gary, absolutely not. And guess what? If somebody wants to sue me, they can take this show, bring it into court, bring it on. Come get Because it. you'll defend it. And you're saying a lot of incriminating things against people. Not one of them has sued you for slander. None of them has taken you for harassment because guess what? They know it's true and they don't want to have it exposed. So. Having said that, welcome to the show. We've only got a half hour, and this is a, a, a big story. So let, let's start at the beginning. Uh, your parents came to uh, America uh, from, from Italy, uh, settled here, and you said your goal was to be uh, an educator. You became educated. Just quickly tell us about your, your education, because I want people to know that you're not some crazy, uneducated guy. Sure. I went to Stony Brook University, got my, master's, uh, got my bachelor's degree, uh, bachelor's in education, uh, started teaching as I was teaching in um, at William Floyd High School towards science, uh, biology, chemistry, and general science. 1996, I want to say, give or take. Um, went back to school, got my master's degree at Stony Brook University. After I finished my master's degree, I went back to school. I got 90 additional postgraduate credits. When I finished those 90 credits, I went back to school again and got my specialist degree in uh, school district administration. I got my, uh, my school building administrator's uh, certificate my school district administrator certificate so I could be a superintendent of schools and my school business administrator certificate. So your goal was to move up and become an administrator? Yeah, yeah, my goal after my, serving my, my, my first like two years in education, my goal was to basically look around me and I decided I, I need as many people as possible to be in charge of me. Right. So I decided to move up the ranks. Right, right. And, and, now, and, and you moved up because you're a charismatic guy. You're obviously a very intelligent guy. You know, I read your book. You know, uh, you, you, know, you, you, know you know what you're doing. You're, you're a smart guy. So people recognize that in you. And you moved up to, where were you, say, 2005? Where were you in your career? In 2005, I was a principal, Hampton Bays High School. I was, I was living the dream. Uh, you know, this is why my parents came to the United States. My family came to the United States so that their children can have the education and the opportunity that they never had. I mean, dirt poor, back in Calabria, Sicily. Uh, you know, no, no bathrooms, nothing. My father went up to fifth grade and he had to work full time. This is why they came for the American dream. And you were living it. So I, was, I, I became, not only was I educated, I became an educator and I was a leader in education. I made a pretty quick rise, you know, at 31 I went to Hampton Bays. By 2005, I was 33 already, and I was already the principal of Hampton Bays High School. Oh, that's quite an accomplishment. And middle school. And, and you're a single guy at this Single at this guy, time. yeah, I was, I was doing well, and, and I was making my family proud. I loved, the most important thing, Gary, I loved it. I was, I was working 80 hours a week. I didn't consider one of those hours work. Loved helping the kids. Loved, I was there Sunday. And you were loved, from what I understand, from the people, you know, who I've heard a few people, you know, post comments, that, that you were loved and very well respected there. Yeah, it was reciprocated, and it was real nice. It really was... It was perfect. It was great. Right. So what? tell us what happened in February of 2016 that turned your whole life upside down. February 8th, 2006, my mom's birthday. I was walking out of school. I left work a little bit early that day. It was the one day I left work early, around 4.30, to take my mom to dinner on her birthday. And she wound up waiting for her son who was never going to show up because I was handcuffed and arrested and paraded around town in Main Street, right in the heart of the day, Main Street in Hampton Bays. 
uh, throngs of people, students crying, parents, and they paraded me in handcuffs. Like you're a violent guy, like, you'd be, yeah, like they, you committed murder or did something violent. Yeah, you needed to be handcuffed like Yeah, this. I was stopped at a, at a red light, they charged my car. Really? Get me out of the car, they, you're under arrest, they didn't ask me anything, Never. I don't even know what was going on. There's, like I was a drug lord, a murderer. The only thing missing was like the helicopter flying above. I mean, they, came, they got me good. It had to be good. surreal. And yeah, and so they handcuffed me, paraded me around. Um, and next thing you know, I'm, I'm in an interrogation room, chained to the floor. And what was and what was the the charges? The charge ultimately, which they never told me, I didn't know until I got, I made it to the arraignment. Well, listen, when they arrested you, did they, did they read you your, your your Miranda rights? No, there was a violation that's on record. They violated my Miranda rights. Okay, so you know, you're in the interrogation room, and I guess you figured out at some point where they were going. Um, you know, I tried. You know, silly me. And and if anybody wants to know, here's a tip. And no offense to the police but they're not your friend, and you have a right to remain silent, and I beg you, remain silent. Well, it's which, any, it. which any attorney will tell you remains. Yeah, yeah, if they you know, ever it. obeyed my request. Right, exactly. I but um, I tried to level with them. You know, they asked me a question. Did you ever call Michelle Koenig? So this, so this let's just go back, because people, so Michelle Koenig, who, who is this? I, I used to, I taught with Michelle Koenig at Newfield High School. You were both, you were both yeah. teach co-workers. We were co-workers. You were her boss. Right, colleagues, okay. co-workers, both single, and, so you had a relationship with her, had no, a, I had a relationship no problem with, her. with that. No, no problem, I had a relationship with her. I moved on, became a principal, so when I became the, an administrator, got my certification, I figured I can't be an administrator here, it would be awkward, you know. So I moved on. And You she, moved on with the relationship. And I moved on to Hampton Bays, and she stayed in touch with me. We stayed together. Okay. Like, you know, it was morally, it's a moral issue, but we, me and her, we messed around. Right. Okay? Two single people, consenting adults. What I didn't know, I don't know if it's too early to tell this. Anyway, she pressed, <laughs> she filed the charges against me. And what were the charges she filed charges against Charges were aggravated you? harassment. And she kind of, she forged a conspiracy. There were seven charges against me okay. of aggravated harassment. I didn't know that. They didn't tell me that. So they asked me, Gary, you ever called Michelle Koenig? And I said, yeah. Of and course, she, you were dating. And, and she called me. You know, which they, I'm sure there's, there's records both ways. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, no did, you ever, did you ever say anything sexual? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and she said back to me, you know, and if you look at the phone records, you know, 40 minute conversation. It's not like, you know, two seconds. Right, call, hang up, hey, yeah. you're a bitch, goodbye. So, yeah. so I was love with them. Yeah, I did. I didn't realize, you know, you, you grow up thinking cops will do right by you. So they would leave the room, come back, you know, 10 minutes later. I was in, I was changing the floor for seven and a half hours. They conjured up, and it's all on record. So no, I was this things. recorded? Was, was your interrogation recorded? It was not recorded. Okay. So uh, they came back with four statements that they said I made. I didn't. Look, he, in fact, when I, got, when I went to the arraignment, my attorney's like, you admitted to this stuff? Admitted to what? I don't even know what to talk about. Like, yeah. Did I admit to calling her? Yeah. She called me. I'd known her for five years at that point. Of course I called her. And you might as well admit to it because there would have been a phone record. Yeah. Because if you lied, you would have been in trouble. And there's incoming calls too, by the way, everybody. Right. Like, but I didn't know that they were going to make these false statements. They, oh, he admitted to it. But that came out in court that, you know. So what happened with, with the charges? So now you're in, you're, you know. There's a three-year prosecution. Um, there's no speedy trial? Or did you waive your right to a speedy trial? Speedy trial? trial? So did, but did you waive your right, or did you not get a speedy trial because of the charges? Because of what they did. They knew that they had the wrong guy, so the speedy trial really doesn't exist. You know, they go to trial when they tell you that you go to right. trial. All the adjournments and all the court motions and this, protective orders. At the time, were you still working? At the, at I was the, working for four months still. I uh, had all the support of Hampton Bay's superintendent, Joe Lonto, supported me. What happened was, after I was arrested, there were orders of protection, Gary, placed against me. Right. And... Which, by the way, people can, for people watching, the orders are protection, and they hand them out like candy in Suffolk oh, County. It. You can go into court and just say anything you want. You know, there's no, no we have, we all know and stuff in Long Island. Nobody prosecutes for perjury, so you can just go into court, say anything you want, and you will get an order of protection against anybody. I have had people get them against their 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 a husband's therapist. You know, yeah. they, they, you know, we, we've had we had just a guest on the show six years, marriage, no problem. They got an order of protection. I I, I experienced them. This is just part of the game plan. Yeah. Is orders of protection. People know that it doesn't matter if you get found not guilty. Nothing happens to the person doing it. That's right. So the fact that she got one means absolutely nothing at all. Right. You can go in, they hand them out. Maybe because they're afraid of getting sued, I don't, but whatever. It, it, there's no trial for to get a temporary order of protection, right? But which what, means you can't contact the person, uh, and you have to stay a certain right. distance. Is and, all rules. And it wasn't a stay away, by the way. It was a, oh, ref it was a refrain from, from. Which means normally for the people watching, that means you could still maybe work there, but usually refrain from harassing, threatening, right. stalking, choking. Right. You know, it's a ridiculous <laughs> right. standard. But okay, so right. you get this, which means that obviously the judge didn't feel that this person was in any physical. 
right. danger because they would definitely otherwise do it. Right. So now there's a refrain from order of protection. Right. You're going along your life, right. waiting, and you're figuring, I guess, hey, I'm going to get my day in court. Right. And it's going to all be I'm, thrown I'm, away. I'm receiving I'm, a paycheck. Let's just, well, we'll play it out. Right. Exactly. And they knew it. I had to, I had, because I was making good money. I, would, I was about to play this out and really turn the tables on them. Right, right. Um, and by the way, take it back a little bit. They called me a terrorist on, uh, uh, at a press conference. The police commissioner, Richard Dorma, labeled me a terrorist at a press wow. conference. Yeah, Before they, they had and, a trial. And a predator. I took the heat for something that Michelle Koenig did. She was in cahoots with a student, and they said basically in the news that I was the one. So if that's not you know, defamation, you know, libel, slander, I mean, right. and also it's here, I am, to- here I am a principal, and I'm in cahoots like do, harassing uh, a student. It also starts to build up a case against you in, in the public, and, right. and then the, the administrators, and right. the, I'm sure they're saying, well, we don't right. want to get behind this guy. He's called a terrorist. Right. So uh, Their case quickly starts to unfold when I get a phone call from a, from a man, um, well, who I'll, I won't name him, yeah, he's doing fine in life, I don't want to bring him into this right now, who came forward and said, you know, Michelle did this to me too. I heard about your arrest in Arizona. It made national news. And he came forward, and there was a pattern. She did it to him, was in cahoots with a student back then. Oh. So the case quickly try, starts to unfold. And they say, shit, we made, and, we and, made and a mistake. Like, we better do something here. But so, what do they do? Because they've already damaged your right. reputation. So they tried to get 50. 50. I have police officer Wayne Heater, his notes, 7th Precinct. They tried to get about 50 people, including my own brother-in-law, to also like, pile on charges just right. to make something stick. Comes up with his own handwriting. Nobody wants to file charges. So like the next day, after Michelle Koenig... Tracks me down. She tracks me down at the Monte Carlo Hotel in Las Vegas. Cameras everywhere. You can't take a leak without being on camera in Las Vegas. Tracked me down at Lowen High School track where I, I lived and I used to, I used to um, run there. I, I, I wish she would follow me around. And I kept telling everybody, the courts, my, my own attorneys, hey, she's fighting. So there's a record that Yeah, she's... I don't want to get pinched and, for this. And, 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 but, you're, but there wasn't a stay away though, right? No, there wasn't okay. a stay. It was okay. her favorite. So um, she tracked me down everywhere. The, the date after you see on the paperwork, you know, none of these people want to press charges. They can't, they, you know, they have no case. It's, it's over. We, we, we botched it. They arrest me for violating the order of protection, which I never yeah. did. Let's get them on something. Let's. Right. Let, and this happens, just so people know, this happens often. A lot of times you get the, full, the, the game plan is, hey, I'll get a false order. The, the attorneys tell them what to do. Hey, I'll get a false order of protection. Nobody gives a shit about it. And then I'll just call in a violation because then the burden is very low. Right. If somebody's got an order of protection and somebody calls in a violation, all they have to do is say, hey, Frank drove by my house. Frank picked up the phone and called me a bitch. That's it. You're done. You're arrested. That's it. And then even if the original one is thrown out, the second one can still stick. Yeah, yeah. Contempt. No, que- the, like the police officer said, this is the sixth precinct. No questions asked. It's That's automatic it. arrest. No questions asked. It's, it's, it's crazy. Right. But so now, but now that has to go to trial. So now you're arrested. You go, did you go to jail? Uh, they sent me back. Yeah. I was in Riverhead jail. Right. Uh, for the first arrest. Okay. Uh, the second one was ROR. Okay, released on your own recognizance. Yes. Uh, st- Which again means that they really didn't think there was any danger because believe me, everyone's afraid of getting sued. Right. If they really thought that you were in, in any uh, possibility that you were going to harm Michelle, they would have not released you. Right. No way. Right, exactly. So they did release you. Right. So what, With what, no bail, nothing. But what happened is what they wanted to happen. See, they told my superintendent after the first arrest that they wanted me arrested. And she said, well, we're supporting him. Like, we're going to play it out. After the second one, it was too much. They got what they wanted. Right. They, I got fired from Hampton Base. Right. Now I have no more paycheck coming in. And everybody starts to slowly but surely jump on board. Yeah, or, and, and they're like. Well, you know what people my, say where they smoke this fire. Yeah. So they start to look, you know what, all these things. They can't be untrue. Right. And before all this corruption came out, so the atmosphere was different. Right. The atmosphere is the police don't do any right. wrong. The police never lie. Exactly. Tom Spoda is an honest man. He's right. been the DA for so long. Yeah. He would never do. So he, the, he takes down corrupt people. Right, exactly. He's the one doing it. Yeah. So like you said, like you opened the show up, I was a nut job. Frank's crying conspiracy. He's just you know disgruntled. He's a disgruntled ex, and she got him, and he's crazy. Right. I'm a little like everything I'm saying is not right. Okay. So. Three years, I'm saying, let's go to trial, let's go to trial, let's go to trial, please. You know, I, I'm stigmatized. I, I can't find employment for four years. Here I'm a principal. Can't find employment for four years. I, I'm arrested for allegedly doing something, you know, harassing a student, which is totally false. And the person that they said was my student that I was harassing, not only was I not harassing that person, she wasn't my student. And she said, it, like, she, I, I deposed her personally. She's like, I don't know, no. Like, she wow. agreed with me. And, like, none of it was true. Just all lies. So. I can't find a job. Next thing you know, I, I'm forced to my home and living in my car. Wow. So you okay. go from the pinnacle of your career to being homeless. Rock bottom, yeah. Um, and just uh, before you've ever been convicted yeah, of a crime. Yeah, and I just want everybody to know it's not my family, my mom. I, they, they would give me their house. I didn't tell my family. I didn't want to put them through. 
through it. Sometimes pride is a weakness. When they read that in my book, they wanted to kill me. Like my mom would be on the street before she lets me be on the street. I just didn't want to let them know. So anyway, you know, my attorneys bail out on me. I have nothing left. And a lot of times the attorneys bail out for two reasons. One, you run out of money. The other one is when they know something bad's about to happen, they yeah. try to bail. Before somebody goes to jail, often they'll say, hey, i got to get off the case. Right. Because they don't want to be the attorney right. when, when you get convicted. Because right. they know, it, especially you, you're going to fight back and they know you're innocent, so, so they bail. Right. So now you get down to, to the end. You're finally getting ready to go to the trial, and you said that you were coerced or misled into a uh, wrong de de deposition. Yeah. Explain that. My attorney calls me up and says that he, he spoke to Matthew Couch of the New York State Education Department. Uh, he's the one that investigates educators once they're reported for misconduct or, or, or an arrest is reported to the State Education Department. So he said, I spoke to Matthew Couch, which he couldn't have made up the name. He, he's there. So right. he spoke to Matthew Couch and then sent the letter. He says, and, and I sent him a letter, and you're going to go back to work. The case is going to be sealed. And I'm, I still said, Gary, no, I want her You're on the witness it. stand. I'm going. I tried to go back, and, and, and I went to see the judge, and I denied, I denied it. And the judge was furious with me. Then we went back, did it again. I tried so hard to play it out, even though I, had, you know, I was playing his hand. I had a full house in my hand. Right. I was, I had, well, I had a full house of a hand, but I was playing it even knowing I have a pair of twos only. <laughs> right, right, right. Because I have nothing left. Right. And, yeah, really have no money to fight and really no attorneys. really no attorneys. They just, I don't know why they're even showing up. So next thing you know, okay, seal it. I'm going back to work. I have the agreement with Hampton Bays. It's on record. I have the agreement. I'm going to go back to work as long as I'm cleared by state ed, which I was. And it's the wrong disposition. What I pled to, a violation, right? Right. And saddest day of my life. That was sadder than when I was arrested because I knew I was innocent. They forced it on me. And not only did they force it on me, my own attorney, his own letterhead, he lied to me. Right. Unless, you know, for the people who are watching and saying, why would you admit to something you didn't do? Let me just tell you, unless you're in this position, unless you're in somebody's shoes like this, never say that because there are many, many people who have gone to jail because they, they, they admitted to committing a crime that they didn't commit because they, they were pushed uh, in an interrogation room. There are, listen, how many, they say oh, almost 20% of the people in jail are probably in oh. there for crimes that they didn't commit because what you're facing, who knows what could happen? You knew the system was corrupt at this point. And if you went to trial, who knows what would have happened? Right. The, the judges pressure the attorneys to get their clients to settle right. because they don't want to have to make a difficult decision. Right. So they pressure them. The attorneys go pressure you, and that's like a feather in their cap. The lawyer, the judges love, hey, you got you got Frank to sign the agreement. So yeah. I could see at that position, you just beat up already. You're you're homeless. You want to get your life and your job back. They tell you what's going to be. Say, all right, I didn't do it, but it's never going to hurt me anyway. So I'll, I'll agree to this deal. Right, so. cut my losses. Right, I'll do it. I'll go back to work. And that's this, the you're not going to jail. You have no right. and, and no you, criminal record. That wasn't a criminal record. Clean Disorderly conduct is not. You can right. still always say I was never convicted of a crime. Right. So you say, all right, I'll take. They I th got. They I got think me. disorderly conduct is the same thing as uh, like a protest. You would yeah. get a disorderly conduct. Yeah. So I cut my losses. I'll just do it. Turns out that wasn't what happened. They lied to me. That wasn't the disposition of the case. Right. I don't go back to work, and I'm thinking, what is happening to my life right now? So five or six months later, it was December 2009. I find out what the real disposition was. I start investigating on my own. I'm in, I'm in my car and I'm thinking, man, let me go do some my own investigating. I start right. becoming my own attorney, my own PI. And I discover, wait, it's not sealed. And here's a key thing that I discover now. This is where the corruption hits the charts. A sworn statement by Michelle Koenig, the woman that started this, started whole, whole, thing. this whole thing, two months, December 19th, 2005, two months before I was arrested, where she admits to stealing my identity, calling a woman and contacting a woman that I dated, okay, uh, and having my phone without my knowledge. Mm. That's exactly what I was arrested for. Conveniently, the prosecution doesn't turn that over to my defense. All on record, it's been proven. They didn't turn it over. Are you kidding me? That's the whole case. Mm. And, and I think one of the things, because we don't have too much time, but I think one of the things you have to talk out is this woman, Michelle. So you, you got contacted from another person that she did the same thing to, uh, pro or similar to, yes. to you, and then she had a relationship with a student. Uh, it's questionable. It's certainly inappropriate. It's questionable. It may be a, a lesbian. Caught in the bedroom. Uh, caught they, in the bedroom. They were caught okay. in the bedroom. Both so, of them were caught in the and bedroom. And she's still on the job. She's still on the job, and they and they, and, the, and the district knows all about it. In fact, before when she did the same thing with another student who came forward for my case after she heard about me, said this has to stop. The district, I got a hold of her her discipline file, which is almost impossible, but the judge allowed me to, to have documents out of it. The district knew about her history and said, if you do this again, we're basically going to press charges against you, the highest extent of the law. They let her do it again. Right. 
They knew she was alone with the student. Forward. The they should have come forward the and said, thing. hey, you know, this is what's happening here. Yeah. The, so, I mean, that it's my point is the corruption, the middle country school district, the DA, it, it's huge. It's all intertangled. They, now, they, what happened to the DA? I mean, it, you, I'm sure at some point you went to the DA's office and said, hey, there's corruption going on. Yeah. You guys made a deal. You backed out of the deal. Yeah. It's not what we what, what was the result of the DA's? Of course, now we know McFarland, who was in the DA's yeah. office, <laughs> was yeah. corrupt also. So, so, I, so I, meet, I go to the DA's office. I meet with But the, you didn't know that. At the, you knew it, but it wasn't proven. Yeah, I meet with Detective Daryl Berger because I found out all kinds who, who, of stuff. Who was the detective? Daryl Berger. Okay. Uh, I'm hop, right here, Hopog DA's office. And him and another guy, I can't believe because I'm so good with names, I can't remember his name, but there was another detective with them. And I said, look at all I found with this teacher and the student and how they set me up, the whole nine yards, how she manipulated the students and set me up um, in a bedroom. I have witnesses. I have all I have papers like this, okay, saying how the lesbian lovers, referring to them as lesbian lovers, everything, right? And they set me up and all this. And I get the runaround, 7th Precinct to 6th Precinct to 7th, back to the DA. DA sends me here. 7th Precinct sends me back. This is a two-year runaround Circle here. Jerk. By the time I get to the, back to Daryl Berger, I say... He goes, you know, even if you're right, even if you're right, the statutes are up. So I say to Detective Berger. For corruption, though? Yeah, so I say to Detective so if the statutes are up, fine and good. Who's in charge of the cover-up? Because I brought this to your attention many years ago, and you guys knew about it before I was even arrested. So who's in charge of the cover-up? That's when it ended, escorted out of the building. Wow, actually escorted out. Escorted out of the building. The meeting, over. That's it. That wow. was 2012. Oh, that's now you, you mentioned in some there was some doctoring of evidence, evidence being destroyed. Uh, yes. Go, go, t I, tell me about so that. So I, because I, I was acting as my attorney, deposed Wayne Heater myself. Who's, it, Wayne, who's Wayne Heater? He's the guy that actually made the arrest. Okay. Uh, detect now he's a detective. You know, he was well, they got to promote him for Pro what he probably did, right? used my arrest, to yeah, to, to, right. to get promoted. So he's detective Wayne Heater, and I deposed him November 19, 2013. And you know, this is what I like. I don't think he's all there because I asked him. I've been deposed a million times. I don't know how uh, you take upon part in depositions at yeah, all. Yeah. Okay, so like the, the throwaway question is, what have you reviewed to prepare for the deposition? Right. Who have you spoken to? Nobody. Nothing. Yeah. Zero. Because right. if, is, if you admit to it, you have to give it to them. Right. They're right. entitled to anything you like. If everybody says no, because if you say yeah, now oh, what is it? Now now they're entitled to it. That's the rule. That's it. He says yeah. I looked at this, 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 this. I'm like, now I get it. Right. I get it. Okay, no problem. Then I put an official discovery request the next day, November 20th. Year and a half goes by, Gary, because I know what he's not turning over. Right. He doesn't realize I, I know what it is. He purged it. It's purged. It's gone. I'm like, what do you mean it's gone? It was in your possession. Right. You said you looked at yeah, it. Well, it was, it, was pur it was scheduled to be purged in 2014. Well, in 2013, I asked you for it. Uh, Doesn't so he matter. He waited it out. Yeah, so he waited out. Next thing you know, so then the court says turn it over. Can't turn it over. It's hands affidavit. It's purred, gone, destroyed. According to the county attorney, Marshall Lynn, that document along with certain others were destroyed. Oh, well, I want the others too, by the way. And I just received an affidavit from the people in charge of purging the files because the court ordered them to turn it over. The people in charge of purging the files said they never saw the documents they're talking about, talking about in the file, which he said he took out of the file. The detective Wayne Heater basically stole evidence out of the file and then got rid of it oh. because if he turns it over Gary and I mentioned this three times in court documents never once and you know how it is in the legal system never once did they deny it oppose it say I was a bold-faced liar like they right, do you know right. never once it proved his relationship with Michelle Koenig he did it to protect himself his professional career his personal life and hers because they knew she was, was the real criminal. Now, now, didn't Michelle have a relationship with somebody else, another principal? Oh, oh and so well, yeah. you shouldn't forget that because I think yeah, somebody's going to say, well, why, was, why would the school not want to expose everything? There's a reason. Well, the reason Middle Country didn't expose it and continue to protect it was because she started sleeping with her principal some 20 years older than him when this whole thing scandal broke in 2006. Mm -hmm. So, so what happened? And he should, and that's actually that's an impropriety because yeah. he's her boss. Yeah, especially when she has that history, they know all about her, and next thing you know, instead of investigating her he's sleeping with her right winds up marrying her really she, she hedges her bets you know <laughs> you know who the maid of honor was at their wedding who's that give everybody one guess the student the student that she had the uh, does anybody want to ask a question like, <laughs> how is this student a student right her at, maid of honor at the not, time not she, just, <laughs> she just turned 19 like can we like backtrack here how'd you get so close with her right right meanwhile she's, she's, she's still teaching gordon brosdale her husband now is the superintendent of mount sinai you know the crap rises to the top 
Mm-hmm. But detective mm-hmm. heater destroyed everyone. It's it's the it's the playbook. It's the Suffolk County playbook. Mm-hmm. Just like Mr. Burke in relationships with all these women, mm-hmm. and then he goes after the boyfriend and husbands, and they get arrested. Right, exactly. So he doesn't get outed. That's their playbook. She was in a relationship. Well, she same was thing. smart because listen, she's, she she may have issues, but she's not stupid. Oh, she's calculating. So she's calculating because she did this. Because now, if this thing broke apart. Yeah. He would be disposed. You say, "Wait a minute! Here's what she did." And then yeah. everybody goes down be- because they knew about it. So That's today right. they're still married. She's they're, still- they're still married. She's safely working. Everybody's covered. Not because they know she. They don't. I, I'm positive that they don't have any high regard for her. It's just that they're once afraid she, of her. No point intended. Once they she goes down, they all go down. Right. So they have. They're a, just protecting her. They're hoping home. you go away. But listen, you're not going away. No, not at Frank, all. Frank, and you've you've written this book, uh, "Standing on Principle." Where can yeah. people get it? Uh, get it. Anywhere, but the best way to get it is to go to my website. The easiest way, go to frankvetro.com, click on the image, it take you right to Amazon. Okay, so they, they can get your book there. You've, and I said that you, you haven't been quiet. You had a radio show on Long Island uh, News Radio. Yep, which, I was uh, on I think you, LI News Radio, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Uh, it's called Standing on Principle, named after my book. And I'm also on WLINY. Which is, which, is, which is something that's important because, listen, you're not shutting up, and they may not have prosecuted you. You're, I don't think you're ever going to give up. No, never. You know, it, and, and but are, are you worried about the repercussions? Because look, there's some pretty nasty stuff for people who speak out. Are you worried? I've been, I've been, I've been warned quite a few times. I've been warned, right. but, uh, but you're not like stopping. watch out. But no, but most people are behind me. Even the police. Listen, even the police. Last night at the end of my show on Ellen News Radio, I had three cops waiting for me outside. Right. They shook my hand. So and I've seen you with them. I'm going to show some of the pictures on the screen. You know, legislators aren't afraid to be no. photographed with no. you because I think they know yeah. they know what it is. I know they know what Congressman, not, yeah. yeah. So they, they know what's going on. And yeah. we'll, we're going to be showing some of those pictures hey, on the screen you now. Know, you know, it's, it's not a, it, this is not, it's, the thing is, it's not a vengeful book. I'm not like, I don't, I don't give you my opinion of Michelle Koenig or the police. It's, right. here's, it's the co- here's the court document. Here's what I got. I put it out there. You read it. Make your own opinion. But it's very damning. On you know, unfortunately, some people don't look at. It's not revenge. It's more. It's a reckoning. You right. do things in life. They catch up with you. Right. Right. And listen, you have to be able to tell your story because, like you said, you get you know you get pigeonholed and you know people are gonna think you know what the police wouldn't have gone after him. The district attorney. Right. None of these people would have, would have all done this. So you get to tell your story here. And as I said at the beginning of the show, you're. You're more than you mention names all the time. You do it on your on your Frank Vetro show. Yeah. You, you do it on. You've been on uh, other talk shows. I Absolutely. Heard you, what other talk shows have you been on? I've been on uh, Jesse Lee Peterson, uh, California national show. Leslie Marshall, uh, national show. Um, on uh, every state, really. You're not what shutting. Are, what do you want to happen, Frank? What What, what do you want to? Ha- I mean, so much time has gone by. They damage you, but you moved on. You've moved on with yeah, your life, and, yeah. and you seem to be happy yeah. and, and doing well. You're, but what What do you want to happen? My today? ultimate goal from from the back seat of my car was to write a book and was to help other people. And that's what I'm doing today. Like people yeah, come in, they are. call on the radio show. I, I help them, like you're doing, doing great things. You know, we help them get the word out, and you know, you meet people along the way. And my goal, and I and I like to think I'm playing a role in what's happening right now in Suffolk County. We have to clean it up. And I think the word is getting out. And my goal is to clean it up and to help people, to give them the opportunity I never had to tell their story. Because right. it's, 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 um, it's medicine. When right. you're going through what, uh, what you're going and through. I uh, your show, your agree. Th- your show is great therapy. As I said, when you're standing there in the court, you know, you get turned into somebody that you're not. Exactly. And it's not a good feeling. If you have an attorney, you can't talk. The judges tell you to shut up. They cut you off. You know, and having your show on WLINY where people can go on, it's, it's archived. They get to tell their story. It's, it's therapeutic, but it also sheds light on this. You know what? For, because they don't let the cameras in the court on purpose. That's right. They don't, so you can't record in court, right. which is a scam, because now you lo- they lose these transcripts all the time, and there's no record of it. Right. So they try to do this in silence, but if there's people sitting there and talking about it, they're not going to shut up Frank Vetro. They're not no, going to turn off the, uh, the the radio show. Your book is out is out there for everybody to see. And, and, and it's been, I, I, they wrote about me 2006, 2007, 2000. That was, the, that was the commercial for Channel 12. Since my book's been released, and since I'm on radio, you have not heard a peep out of them about me right. and there's a reason it's all true right exactly because like, as I said they would they believe me they would love to sue you and get you thrown in jail yeah. and, and, and throw away the key so you couldn't talk about it and they're not right. well Frank thank you very much I for appreciate coming. the thank opportunity you for, thanks uh, Gary for everything that you're doing on, the, on your radio shows speaking out against the corruption a lot of people are afraid to do it because listen they, they are repercussions but you know what you've already been at the bottom that's it so once you're there it's a mistake that they do because once they do that right. nothing scares you anymore they should leave anymore. something for they, you exactly you, you've been in jail already you've that's lost right. your money you slept in your
you call? What are they going to hold over your head? That's you right. lost your job. It's a bad place to put somebody in. That's right. You never want to do it. It's like backing somebody into a corner. I'm Gary Jacobs, and again, thank you for joining us at Long Island Backstory. Please share this show. Put it on Facebook, social media, Twitter. Share the link. The more people that see it, the better, because you never know when it's going to get into the right person's hands and something is going to be done about it.